Hi guys, and welcome back to the Super Data Science series on web scraping, where we're using Scrapey to go out and crawl data on the web. As a quick recap, in the last video, we are continuing to work on our third spider. This is the, again, as you would imagine, the third spider we have built in this series. We are trying to return some information from the IMDB, the movie website, the top of the charts. There's 250 titles. We're trying to return some information from them. And as you can see in the last lecture, in the last video, we set up our parse to go out and retrieve data based on specific variables and parameters such as the XPath, classes, and going through the links to return this data. Now in this video, the main point is going to be just one, to set up our items to return further data. And we're also going to run this to try and return a CSV formatted document with our data that has crawled from our spider. So let's get started and jump right in. All right, we find ourselves back in our spider environment. Again, we're gonna go through this. Once we type out the code, we'll go and analyze it further. If you're not understanding anything, as always, any questions, please share them, any ideas as well. But let's continue. We have to set another parse. As you would imagine, we're going to be parsing our in detail. self response and here we're going to be pulling in our movie item this is where we're going to be setting uh, the specific items that we already added in title directors writers stars and popularity which we're aiming to use the xpath and specific classes to extract the data to use this to formulate to scrape and add into our csv so it's gonna go out, or the goal of it is to go out, scrape the data, the 250 at the top of the charge, and also to return the title, directors, writers, stars, and popularity for these movies. So the first thing is we're gonna set our item equal to movie item. From here, remember from example items, we imported our movie item, okay? Now we'll type out the first two and we'll paste in the last remaining three parts before we return the items, just because it's gonna become a little redundant here. And the main point or the main focus is to examine the response of the XPath, where we're actually looking for the data. Remember the classes and the HTML and CSS selectors that are used, but it'll make more sense once we can see it. So let's work with our first item and it is the title so the name of the movie we want to set it response xpath and again open parentheses here is where we're passing in the basically the directions if you think about it to go and to look for this data to crawl so we're using the div open brackets at the class and the class name is title wrapper close brackets slash h1 slash text empty open brackets add that in closing and we need to call the extract on it give it some directions of zero and what okay let's return it we'll do it one more time for directors and then again for the last three we'll paste them in we're going to go through and view the information and some more details about you know the response and returning the item now we can add the item of directors you might have seen that coming if not that's no problem we want to add the response again of xpath and it's going to be the same thing, not the same thing as the same directions, the same thing for the next couple items. We are going to, again, set the directions on where to go look for the data. Open parentheses. Add in two slashes. We want to use div. Brackets at class equals parentheses credit summary 
item, closing quotations, space, slash, span, open brackets again, at item prop equals director, closing quotations, closing bracket, slash a, slash span, slash text, parentheses, single quotation, and then the following, dot extract, again, extracting data here, parentheses, oh, I just want to move on the outside of that. And we need to add in this index of zero. Make sure that's clear. Yep, looks good. All right, so we have our title and directors added in. Now I'm going to add in the next three. So again, we're gonna be working with writers, stars, popularity, and then we're gonna examine the information. But it should start making a little sense, kind of uh, the approach that we're using here, that we're going through and looking for the items that we built or the items that we added in our example items. We're looking for these specific items based on these directions. And after we add the next three in, again, we'll go over and provide some further context. Thanks for staying with me. And here we have our main item list built. We have again, titles, directors, writers, stars, and popularity based on the directions we're giving. We have our response X paths, our classes, if you have the chance, go on or take a look, open up the inspector and see if you can find them or see if you can develop or think of some other ways to extract data or just general ideas for creating your own spiders here. But this is kind of the, the main approach as you've seen through our three spiders. But getting back to this one, let's take a look at the stars, okay? We are going into the div with the class of the credit summary item. As you see, these are all kind of bu uh, built on this class credit sum summary item, it's a way to help either organize it when you're putting web pages together, you know, you do assign these classes to quite a few different objects and allows you to you know, make it easier for styling or for assigning other parameters to them when you're building the website. And then here, I hope you're getting a general idea or a main idea of how to build your spiders in the future or how Scrapey works. What we can mainly see is after we add our items in, we are specifying them based upon our example items and the importation from movie item, the names of them at least. We have to set up a response to XPath. We have to provide directions on where to scrape the data, and then we have to extract it and give it further directions, okay? So it's a general approach. Obviously, it can be more basic. It can be more complex. As we see, this is Scrapey's setup. Set our response, provide directions, extract data, return it. And speaking of return, we have to add in one final thing here. We want to return item. Can't forget that. With that added in, we have finished our third spider. Fantastic job so far putting together these spiders. And I hope you've enjoyed this journey with Scrapey. But now let's work on running it. So first things first, open a terminal. Open my terminal here. Make it a little bigger for you. We want to activate, so I'm on Mac, we want to source activate scrapey environment. All right, I have my folder over here, so what I'm going to do, it's a little big right there. I'm going to CD and I'm gonna drag my spiders over here. All right, now, once you're there, I'm just gonna close that, ah, I'm gonna leave it for a second. I'm going to run the following. Scrapey crawl IMDB test spider output. I'm going to example.csv and we want to do to CSV. But don't run it yet. Hold on one second because I did run some tests and we had an error come back from when I created the item. I ended up opening the items.py file. I copied it and I opened it into spider, okay? And this is what you have to do in the file. We needed uh, the indentations, the spacing here, and we also needed scrapey. Scrapey might have been misspelled. It just accidentally had two Ps in scrapey. 
So we don't want to call it scrappy. We want scrapey. So remember, if you do run it, it might come back with that error. Or if you just edit it really quickly right now, remember the spaces, the indentations for our items and to check the spelling on scrapey item. And one last edit. I want you to check the file in the following locations. My apologies. It's just sometimes running these tests and examples and we are passing these things in, you know, it just goes to show you that debugging is always necessary and always helps to run specific parts of your code or to run the code and look at the tracebacks in the terminal where you can figure out really what happened. I want you to check the following lines to make sure there are no typos or errors. This was missing the quotation marks here. I also want you to check the title, the title line here. But with that, if there were, for example, if that was missing, just add it in and save it. And again, just check these two lines. I added in these as markers. We're gonna now run our scrapey file and hopefully it all works out. All right, we're ready to run. We need a little bit of drum roll here as we're looking to return our data. I would also like to mention, you know, I did use source activate. If you're on Windows, just use activate in the name of your environment. We, to clarify, are outputting it to CSV format. We want it to CSV. And now with our example, it should go into the spider directory. Let's run it and see what happens. And we can see that it's starting to scrape. I'm gonna let it run, pause the video, and we'll jump back into it. All right, the spider has finished crawling. Now we are going to navigate into our spider folder, find example.csv, and let's see our results. And look at that. We have scraped the movie successfully. We have our CSV formatted with directors, popularity, stars, title, and writers. You know, this is just such an awesome start. I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. The fact that we can now use a CSV, uh, you can use libraries such as Pandas to read the CSV into a data frame and extract and build upon data from there. It just goes to show you that web scraping, scrapey are such essential tools on building your own data sets or working with data. And we could scroll through this and take a look at some of the movies. These are all great films. And the main takeaway is we know now how to work with our XPaths. We can create items. Remember our items that we were working with, the title, the writer. Let's navigate back to the algorithm really quickly. And we have our popularity, stars, writers, directors, title. Open that back up. Of directors, popularity, stars, title, and writers. All in a nice, neatly formatted CSV document. Let me just say, awesome job. And I hope you're taking away a lot of useful information about the Scrapey library and web scraping in general. But I have some excellent news. We are going to be presenting in the next few videos a challenge for you to get some hands-on experience and more practice with Scrapey. So be sure to check in soon and pay attention for the next few videos in this series. We're gonna wrap it up now. If you have any questions, please feel free to share them and comments, ideas. As always, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel where you get up-to-date and weekly information and really fascinating things that are going on within the industry. And again, keep an eye out for the upcoming episodes in this series where you will be presented with a challenge to get some hands-on experience. I'm excited and can't wait to bring it to you and I will see you there.